Hey guys, we're back down in the workshop. So the lightning detector has been running for a couple weeks. Uh, again, it's sitting on the second story of my house, just in a window. The uh, antennas are just sitting on the uh, on the window ledge. It's been performing quite well, uh, but now it's time to start working on the permanent installation for the antennas and the amplifiers. I've disconnected everything temporarily, so I have the B field antenna and amplifier here electric field antenna and amplifier here so the goal for tonight is to first off replace the test antenna uh, just with a with a piece of 10 centimeter wire uh, which is what they recommend I figure out a way to waterproof the amplifier section mounted onto the piece of steel that I have and then the same thing goes for the B-field antenna and amplifier. Mount those and then secure the uh, the amplifier to, to the steel. Make sure everything's weatherproof uh, and waterproof. And then hopefully tomorrow, mount the cables and all the wires uh, in the detached garage. And then finally, screw the entire assembly uh, somewhere onto the roof. At least that's the plan. Uh, but let's see if we can get uh, part one done tonight, which is getting uh, getting the antennas and everything mounted to to the steel. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we'll cut off this test antenna. piece of 12 gauge wire here. I'm not quite sure it needs to be this long though. I'm just going to measure it out. Okay, so we've chopped off the, the test antenna. I'm going to cut my wire at about 25 centimeters. It's a little bit longer than the recommendation, but it's fine by me. Trim the end so I don't have too much exposed metal. And to my surprise, 12 gauge fits quite well in that socket. So Okay, so that's what I'm going to use for my E-field antenna. Hopefully it's an improvement over the, uh, the test antenna. Um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, it's really hard to kind of track these things, uh, but from when I checked the BIOS, this antenna would get about, oh, maybe about five signals every hour, hour and a half, uh, whereas the B-field antenna would grab tons and tons of signals. Uh, so we'll see how this... Uh, how this performs um, I'm gonna hopefully if I can get all this done tonight I'll uh, I'll put this whole assembly back up in the loft and and run it overnight and uh, and see what kind of performance we get I think for for weatherproofing the the amplifier section I'm just gonna wrap the uh, the whole thing in uh, some heat shrink I'll seal the ends with um, with some silicone, and uh, I'll just tie strap it to uh, to the top. Hmm. Okay, so the plan for the E field antenna and amplifier is to mount some standoffs at the end. I'm gonna encase the entire setup in heat shrink. 
and then mount those to the standoffs and then seal up all the openings with some silicone uh, so hopefully that uh, that'll do the trick Okay, so there's the E-field antenna sealed and mounted. Oh, the silicone kind of makes a mess of everything, but uh, again, I wrapped the whole thing in heat shrink, uh, silicone the top, and mounted it on some standoffs. Put a little bit of CA, make sure the standoffs don't loosen up over time, and uh, yeah, should be good. Hopefully, when we reconnect everything, it still works. I don't see uh, I don't see why it wouldn't. So next, we're gonna mount these B field antennas. Okay, so I have the B field and E field antennas mounted. I've made sure that the E field antennas are perpendicular to the steel, but I haven't leveled them. They should be level uh, with respect to each other, um, but I haven't made sure that they're 90 degrees uh, perpendicular to each other. Uh, to do that, I, I'm just going to measure them and then calculate the angles. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, like I said, I was getting pretty good, uh, pretty good signals from just eyeballing them and placing them on the uh, the windowsill upstairs. So if they're out by a little bit, I I, I could put uh, a shim uh, in behind the the front or the back to kind of uh, adjust them slightly. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how everything works out, and uh, and go from there. I think they're probably going to be, they're probably going to be okay. Uh, so the last thing I have to do is mount the uh, the B field uh, amplifier, which I'll be mounting down here. I'm going to cut out spot for the uh, the antenna wires and for the the Ethernet cable. I'm going to mount this and then screw that to to the front that's probably the easiest uh, the easiest way to do it so we're gonna get that started that should be the last thing uh, the last thing for today
Okay, so there it is. It's not the prettiest thing, but it's going in the back behind the uh, the garage. So very few people will ever actually see it. I'm gonna go over all the hardware with a little bit of paint just to make sure. Oh, provide a little bit of uh, rust protection, weather protection. So we have the uh, magnetic field amplifier, magnetic field antennas, and the electric field antenna and amplifier. So I do have to run some wires tomorrow. Um, we're gonna get that done hopefully in the morning. And if all works out in the afternoon, we'll, uh, we'll mount this to the top of the detached garage. Hey guys, it's the next day. We're just out here in the new garage. I didn't get a chance today to actually mount the antenna, but I did manage to pull the wires for the antenna that will be installed on the roof. It was a really long and, and painful job. Uh, we have a really low slope on this roof, so it was really cramped up in the, uh, in the rafters, but managed to get the two cables, uh, the coax and the, uh, the network cable pulled for the future installation of the antenna. So we're just gonna walk around outside and show you where the uh, permanent home for the antenna will be once we get a chance to mount it. Okay, we're at the back of the garage and that's where the cables exit. So the plan is to attach the antenna to the peak of that roof. Uh, when I'm gonna get around to it, oh, probably next weekend, hopefully. In the meantime, the station's been running again on the second floor. So let's take a quick look at the stats and see how everything's running. Okay, let's take a quick look at the stats for my station. Now that I've relocated all the antennas onto the uh, their permanent mount, I haven't really noticed any difference in the uh, the count rates or the uh, the number of signals that are getting processed. It's really difficult to uh, to compare because you're never comparing apples to apples. You um, the last time I checked and looked at the statistics, my station was about halfway up in the uh, in the signal count but again it, it's it's a not an apples to apples comparison because if you look at this um, this map as it stands today obviously the stations closer to the storms are going to be receiving more of the signals whereas my station is barely going to uh, to catch any of them the other thing that's hard to uh, or that makes comparing the numbers tricky is each strike has a different intensity um, so you never know um, with any specific strike whether or not it it's strong enough to uh, to reach you if I look at just compared to where uh, the distances that the signals are traveling I'm still I still seem to be missing a lot uh, these two stations in uh, in Alberta seem to be able to grab quite a bit of uh, quite a number of signals from from a good distance so for example we'll see well that one I actually I picked that one up so not the best example so that one for example those stations picked it up mine didn't uh, which leads me to believe that those ones are a lot more sensitive than uh, than my antennas um, well, we'll take a look at the numbers and uh, and see how everything's doing. So one of the things I did find informative was this compass telling you where all the signals that you've received are coming from. Now again, this has to be taken in context. Uh, it could be that you know that location to the south southwest of me just has more likelihoods of storms during this time of the year. Uh, but while watching the uh, the live lightning map, I did notice that you know the the Atlantic regions were not very well uh, storms in the Atlantic weren't very well picked up by my station. I don't know if it's because there's some uh, geology in my area that's that's blocking the signals from from that region. Uh, but I did notice that, and this map is uh, is confirming that for me. So uh, something else to uh, to look into.
All right, and this last image is the statistics for my station to date. You can see around April 19th, that, uh, that little period of time when it was offline, that's when I actually uh, did the work in the earlier part of this video. Uh, it's been a couple weeks <laughs> since I, I filmed that. Uh, since then, everything's been running quite smoothly. I uh, haven't noticed any, uh, any dramatic increase in signals. Uh, just for a quick reference, the orange line are the, uh, the signals that are detected by the, uh, the station. Um, the green lines are signals that are selected to calculate the, uh, the lightning strike location. And then the blue line is the uh, signals that are selected uh, to compute the, uh, the final calculation. So ideally you want to get the, the blue line as, as high as possible. Or you'd like to see as, the blue line as, as high as possible as you know that's the data that actually gets recorded uh, over the long term. So it's kind of stayed pretty much constant uh, even before and after the uh, mounting the antennas to the uh, the uh, piece of steel. It will be interesting to see when we actually move it uh, to the top of the uh, the garage to see the difference. I've also noticed that the station has started to go for brief periods of time into uh, interference mode and again that's where it's collecting um, so many signals that it they're not real they're just caused by some other phenomenon either local electrical uh, signals that are interfering with the detector but uh, what happens is when there's too many signals it assumes that they're not real which it's probably right they aren't real um, so it stops transmitting those signals um, up to the server so you don't want to have your station running in interference mode and I get bursts of uh, uh, brief periods of time but bursts of, of time when the station does uh, go into interference mode I have no idea what's causing it I uh, haven't been able to link it to a specific activity that we're doing in the house it could be an atmospheric uh, thing that's happening just something I do have to do uh, more research on. All right, that about does it for this update for this project. The next update will be when I mount it to the roof and let it run for oh, a couple weeks and see what the statistics look like. But until then, we'll just keep collecting the data that we're collecting and do a bit of reading to see if I can improve it any. Um, but until next time, I'll see you later.